Hillary's taken it as well. Hillary Clinton goes and visits her alma mater, Wellesley. And she goes there thinking she's going to be, you know, a big, you know what deal. And well, she, she's a big deal. All right. But perhaps not in the way that she had thought or wanted. She got heckled. I mean, join the crowd, Hillary. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that now you feel it. I've been to my alma mater and had to deal with a few things as well. You know what? It just goes with the territory, left or right, because you can't say anything these days. Well, they don't like her very much at Wellesley anymore. And uh, they made that quite, quite apparent. Let's go to the heckler in the crowd, and then you're going to see the bigger crowd. But let's start off first. Drew, if you have this heckler shouting out at Hillary Clinton, just trying to give a nice little speech at her alma mater, Wellesley College. I'm perfectly happy to meet you after this event and talk with you, but we're going to go on with our discussion. So, Mary, do you have any other uh, questions? Can I have something? Never taken out. Let's keep watching. It helps you corroborate and confirm your own beliefs. So I know there are students here who are frustrated. We understand it's emotional. So Hillary didn't really have anything to say. So she just let the moderator get up there and do all the talking. Did you see that? She just sat there and took it, I guess. And the moderator kind of tried to make things better. And the funny part about it is, oh, we don't always have to agree. We don't always have to, as they haul the woman out of the auditorium. I mean, it's just kind of amusing, sort of funny. And the truth is, no, we don't always have to agree. And I would say this, it's never appropriate, really, to heckle. I mean, either side. I mean, there's a better way to do this. You don't have to be the screaming lunatic in the auditorium to be heard, right? Um, but anyway, she wasn't the only one. There were lots of screaming people there on campus. And I think we have a picture of everybody outside. So Hillary no sooner dealt with that, that she then had to walk outside and get greeted by this group of students who were pro-Palestinian protesters. And then there was this little thing uh, on the, the local television news. And uh, well, the, the reporter does a good job kind of breaking it down, just how much animosity there was felt right that you could just feel it it was it was very permeable there on campus in wellesley mass let's listen 
Well, some students are not happy to have Hillary Clinton on campus. They're handing out these pamphlets and saying they have no interest in following in her footsteps. A group of students protesting outside a woman-led democracy summit at Wellesley College featuring former Secretary of State and Wellesley alum Hillary Clinton. The protesters handing out pamphlets calling her Wellesley's most beloved war criminal, saying she has blood on her hands. They're condemning Clinton's legacy while the college launches a new center named after her to prepare the next generation of civic leaders. Wellesley administration releasing a statement on the protest saying, quote, I encourage all who participate in activism to follow the demonstration policy and be mindful of our code of student conduct so that you remain safe for yourself and for our community. Here's what one of the protest organizers had to say. We have been told pretty repeatedly from administration that any sort of interruption Dude, can you pause it for one second the event of you know i just want to say do you notice how this young woman who's there to complain about hillary is wearing a mask outside <laughs> i mean there's a type shall we say ladies and gentlemen there there is a type and there they are alive and well wellesley college let's keep listening would result in an honor code, which could potentially be a suspension. We're also not allowed to bring signs inside. Um, basically, and we also have to like stand behind specific barriers to protest the event. Sessions. Yeah, and not to mention, you know what? Nobody can hear you because you get your darn mask on. That kind of throws off the whole protest as well, doesn't it? Kind of dampens the mood, quite literally, softens the tone. Anyway. Hillary got heckled. The point is, ladies and gentlemen, the left has a problem. Its base does not like what's going down. Uh, someone actually, uh, forgive me, it might have been on MSNBC. It was like another one of those wake-up calls for the lefty media. Somebody pointed out recently, and I think this is fair, that you, you feel a lot of anti-Semitism coming out of these left-wing base sort of groups that are so against the traditional establishment. Look, I understand why you might be against the traditional establishment for the economic policies that have led to, frankly, generations being unable to achieve what they should be able to achieve. I mean, that is bad policy that's put a lot of people in a really, really bad spot. But to pick this as the number one issue is just really interesting. I think it's going to be extremely hard for the Democrat Party to be able to navigate this. They're not as nimble as Donald Trump. I mean, Donald Trump is definitely nimble. I mean, he's taken some heat today. People wanted to get the national, uh, they want to get the national ban on abortions in, and he's refusing to do that. Again, sort of proving and I think showcasing some of this nimbleness, if you would, but it makes sense in that he said, okay, it should go back to the states. But isn't that, isn't that actually what he wanted? Originally, a lot of conservatives wanted it to go back to the states initially. So it would be somewhat hypocritical of him to say, okay, now I'm going to order a national ban. If you actually believe in the integrity of the law that you saw your Supreme Court rule over, and, and when they kicked it back to the states, if you're going to suddenly change that, it becomes more complicated. And so I think he's actually able to, to negotiate a lot of these challenging spaces. I mean, IVF was another example of that down in Alabama where Donald Trump is like kind of throwing things on its their head. I mean, the, the view didn't know what to make of this. They could only assume that Donald Trump only wanted to have more affluent white children because it's to their point, these are their words, the affluent white Americans that are trying to have kids and that use IVF. Therefore, Donald Trump okaying it and wanting it is just an example of more race challenges and issues, et cetera. I mean, I, I just, it's, it's getting to the point where it's just disgusting to listen to this, but this is the narrative they're coming up with. He's nimble. He's able to kind of bounce back from these things. He'll have his work cut out for him, both with Ukraine and obviously Israel, if he gets a top gig, which Gosh, you know, you look at these poll numbers, ladies and gentlemen, I don't know how he doesn't get it right now. I mean, it's going to be tough. And I, I don't want to count my chickens before they, they hatch, so to speak. I do think that Lara Trump and the lawyers that are working aggressively to make sure that we have fair, fair, fair opportunities in every single state, in every single district across this country, they got to do that groundwork first. They got to do the ballot harvesting as well. You know, the Democrats play that game. We got to play it too. You fight fire with fire. Okay, 
on this day of the eclipse when I'm in my hot orange outfit. <laughs> like fire with fire.